Hey everyone, welcome to ONTAP. I'm Chris, and I'm not an expert, just a guy who enjoys good beer. Let's talk about the first Japanese craft brewery of the show, Kawaba. Now, as I discussed in a previous Japan episode, since the early 20th century, brewing in Japan has traditionally been dominated by a few major beer producers. But in recent years, Japanese microbrewers have been mixing things up, and leading the way is Kawaba. Kawaba was founded in 1998, which pretty much coincides almost exactly with the relaxation of a major Japanese brewing law. See, up until the mid-1990s, if you wanted to start a brewery in Japan, a company had to produce a high enough volume of beer from day one, such that smaller microbreweries, funded with limited capital effectively could not exist. This law was repealed in 1994, and pretty much as soon as that happened, the founders of this brewery decided to get into action. Kawaba beer is named after the location in which it is brewed, the village of Kawaba, located in Gunma Prefecture, which is only a handful of fully landlocked provinces in Japan. Kawaba means the place of rivers, and that's a very apt name, as this location has no less than five rivers running through it. The village is essentially nestled in this very sort of lush, forested, mountainous, inland region of Japan, and it's rather rural. You can only access it, aside from driving there, by sort of intermittent local train service. And for the Japanese, with their highly efficient bullet trains that take you in the you know blink of an eye from one part of the country to the next, using intermittent local train service to get to a village means that this is a fairly rural location in the scheme of Japan. You know, it's kind of like the modern equivalent of Katsumoto's village in The Last Samurai, a very lush, idyllic, and secluded Japanese locale pretty much off the grid. Kawaba is a very new company in the scheme of Japanese brewing, and it's certainly a trailblazer in the world of Japanese craft brewing. The company is in fact coming to define a new style of beer, the Japanese Pale Ale, or JPA for short. What defines a JPA as a type of beer is, it is indeed a pale ale, and it's got some bitterness to it, but it has a very soft bitterness, at least relative to an IPA or even an American Pale Ale. The company, despite being a Japanese microbrewery, actually exports most of its beer to the United States. Currently, you can find Kawaba in 13 different US states as of the recording of this video, as well as Japan, obviously. Though the company is also planning to expand operations. The brewery gets its water from the streams that run off of Mount Hotaka. And as I've mentioned in previous episodes before, water that comes off of mountains is exceptionally clean and clear and just very good quality overall. And that means it's great for brewing beer. The company also gets its hops from Germany, so really good ingredients overall. Now, interestingly, the brewery is also part of a sort of village company collective where basically a lot of the little shops and bakeries and grocery stores and, well, the brewery are all part of kind of this single corporate unit that the, the villagers basically manage. So yes, Kawaba is very much through and through a microbrewery. Kawaba is also a company that provides a lot of information on food, specifically what kinds of Japanese foods you should pair with which of their beers. I'll talk more about this in tasting. Finally, all of Kawaba beers are unfiltered, meaning they're gonna have a sort of cloudy appearance. And one recurring motif of their flavor profile, or motif, theme? aspect, one aspect of their flavor profile, as defined by the brewers, is a, quote, roundness of flavor, or a very round feeling in the mouth while consuming the beer. We shall see what that tastes like during the tasting portion. Today, we will be trying all four Kawaba beers. First up, Pearl Pilsner. This is an unfiltered rice pilsner made with not just barley, but also a local variety of rice called Yuki Hotaka, and that makes up about 24% of the grain used in the brewing. The beer is described as very slightly sweet because of the rice, as well as a little bitter. It pairs very well with other rice-based dishes, including sushi. Snow Weizen. This is an unfiltered wheat beer, Weizen meaning wheat in German, and it's a reasonably medium-bodied beer that has some slightly sweet citrus notes, and it pairs quite well with lighter dishes such as sushi. Sunrise Ale. This is an unfiltered amber ale with a mix of kind of caramel malty sweetness and a little bit of crisp floral hoppy bitterness, but not too much. It pairs quite well with heavier, stronger dishes like yakitori, a Japanese style of barbecue where meat and usually vegetables are grilled on skewers over an open flame. Twilight Ale. This is a pale ale, or Japanese pale ale, so that new type of beer we were talking about, and that means it's going to be a bit softer than something like an IPA. Its flavor profile is a mix of both bitterness and sharpness along with umami, umami being a sort of savory taste profile that derives in many ways from meat. Some people have even described umami as a sort of deep, savory, meaty deliciousness. And this beer is supposed to pair with both light and heavy dishes. Now, I don't know about you, but I am very excited to try my first ever Japanese craft beers. And yes, these are the first Japanese craft beers I will have ever had. So first up, 
Kaaba Pearl Pilsner. This is the one where one fourth of it's brewed with rice, but it's not brewed with rice in the sense of that being just sort of a cheap filler. This is rather good quality rice, said Yuki Hotaka rice. Uh, and we can see here on the, the label, there's you know sort of the stalks of, I believe those are rice grains. You know, it has a, it's not super cloudy. I mean, it, maybe it's, maybe it's slightly cloudier than other beers, but it looks pretty similar, I'd say, to a lot of other sort of lager, you know, Pilsner style lagers. It has an aroma that I really associate with East Asian lagers. There's, there's a sort of um, clean sharpness in the, in the aroma that you, there's something about it with East Asian beer that I don't tend to get with sort of European or American um, or Latin or sort of, you know, US, European or, or Latin American beer. That's a, that's a very, very nice, smooth, yet sharp beer. Again, um, very enjoyable to drink, but it's got those characteristic notes of, of a beer that's from East Asia. And it's, I've, I've tried to sort of describe this in a couple past episodes, but there's a very particular underlying tone to the sort of clean sharpness of this beer that you really, you just don't get in beers from, you know, Germany or the Czech Republic or, you know, American microbrews. It's, it's something very particular um, to places like Japan and China. It's a very nice, you know, clean kind of flavor. And I, and I do wonder if that is partly the use of rice, not as an additive, but as a very sort of deliberate type of grain that adds another flavor to the beer that you don't get if you're drinking, let's say, you know, German or Belgian beer and they're just using barley. A very unique sort of East Asian clean sharpness to the beer. It's a very nice lager. And I think the cleanliness too, it's, it's that idea of them using this really, really nice mountain water. Um, it, it's, it just feels so refreshing drinking that, just the quality of the water, the quality of the ingredients really come through in the flavor of this beer. There's nothing about it that is off-putting or sort of meh or generic. It's a very, very nice, well done, smooth beer. One thing I will note though, is it's not exceptionally hoppy. So although it is described as a Pilsner, it's a very mild um, sort of hoppiness. It's, it's a mild crispness. It's more of the flavors of like really, really excellently pure sort of, you know, like, well, snow melt, you know, water from, from a mountain, right? Combined with some really good quality ingredients, rice, barley, a little bit of hops, but not too much, all blended together to make for a very enjoyable drink. So next up, the Snow Weizen. This looks very similar to the, the Pearl Pilsner. That's a very interesting beer. Now, if you gave this to me as in a blind taste test, I'm not sure I would say I would categorize this as a wheat beer, to be honest. It, it tastes to be in a very similar category as something like the Pearl Pilsner. It's a very similar flavor profile. It's not exact, but it's very similar. Um, it's very enjoyable to drink. It's still got that excellent, excellent, clean, crisp sort of sharpness to it, though I think with this, the sharpness is toned down a little bit and there's more of a citrus note at the back. So if you kind of, if you switched out feeling of what I think is, is essentially the rice um, and a little bit more hops with more, you know, kind of citrusy, bright notes while still keeping some of that same body. So good quality ingredients, you know, good, good barley. I, I, I'm still not getting much wheat from this, but anyway, um, you know, really good quality water, that sort of thing. And you kind of brew that all together. That's more what this tastes like. In, in some ways it's, um, it's just like a slightly more, ever so slightly more citrusy. And I almost hesitate to say citrusy, but like just barely tart version of um, this one. It's still quite enjoyable. Not obvious how it's a wheat beer, but it's very nice to drink. Yes, I'm getting more of that, that tart citrusy note on the second drink. Um, but it, but it seems like it has a very similar body to this. So just a very slightly different flavor profile at the top. Foundations for these beers taste very similar. Let's continue on to beer number three, the Kawaba Sunrise Ale. So this is the Amber Ale. 
that goes with more sort of heavier dishes, like I said, yakitori. So, you know, usually, um, you know, meat and vegetables grilled on a skewer. Um, you can have other stuff too. I mean, you can have yakitori, you, it's like seafood yakitori and, and things like that. Um, I've had it a couple times, but I'm, uh, it's, been, it's been a few years since I've gone out to a really nice yakitori meal. Anyway, let's take a look at this. And that is absolutely a wonderful amber color. So absolutely lives up to its name, Sunrise Ale. And, and indeed, I will say of the three, this is definitely quite cloudy. That's a nice amber ale. I mean, this is, I mean, we're, th we're three for three as far as I'm concerned with these beers. That is a, that is a very nice amber ale. It is, and maybe it's just because I was doing the research on this, it's just like the water in this, just there's something about it that is just so clean and pure, and that's underlying just kind of everything else in the beer. There are notable notes, but it's a very soft kind of beer. So it's got some bitterness, it's got some caramel sweetness to it, but these are these are very muted notes in a good way, mixed in with with a really really just clean feeling. Uh, it, this is this is one of these beers where it's not sort of overpowering your senses or it's too much or anything like that. It's a very mellow and kind of soft collection of flavors that you'd expect from an amber ale, but just less aggressive. And I suppose, now I'm thinking back on this, when the brewers talk about a roundness of flavor, I wonder if this is this is kind of what they mean by that, right? It's it's all of those notes and when I say they're dialed, from, they're dialed back from, say, like a stronger amber ale, I don't mean that in a bad way, but more just they're, they're just more calm. There's a, there's a calmness and like almost like a, a, a serene feeling to the note, the caramel notes and the, the bitterness and all of that with, you know, with the excellent, with the excellent water. So I'm going to take another taste. A little bit of dry bitterness and caramel malt. And, and a smoothness all that sits over the excellent water. I'm just thinking with the stronger food flavors, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting mix. I don't know how this, I mean, I suppose maybe with, in the scheme of Japanese food, maybe stronger flavors, that does make sense, you know, since like with a lot of aspects of Japanese cuisine and, you know, and drink and all this, right, there is a certain amount of real subtlety to a lot of, you know, Japanese food and drink. So relatively speaking, a stronger Japanese dish. Yes, I could see how this kind of works, works with that. Last, but hopefully not least, I'd like to think not least, we have Kawaba Twilight Ale. Um, so this is this new style of beer, a Japanese pale ale, JPA for short. Also, one thing I want to comment on is the label design with these. I, I really like it. You know, Twilight Ale, and you've got, you know, a mountain, and mountains, and, and the moon, and all of that, and that, you know, is very much a comparison with you know the sunrise ale and you've got of course you know the sunrise coming over the mountains japan land of the rising sun right sort of that's a very uh, very apt reference for for japanese um japanese things uh, again i love the sort of again i think it's pearl rice you know don't hold me to that this one i will say is probably is probably the least notable it's just you know i i like the the the, the color on all of these like it's a very nice kind of calming um color here there's I think a little bit less to note. I really do like, uh, again, that sort of like calming subtlety, but also, you know, clear notions of like what you're looking at in, in the labels. So let's get this poured out. Nice frothy head, a little bit of a fluffy head, um, and a good sort of, almost like an apricot sort of orange, uh, almost like a, Almost like a marmalade color. Maybe not quite. Maybe not quite that bright. But sort of in that in that you know vein. Just a very slight, almost like a like a burnt orange sweetness. That's also a really nice beer, and it is. That's really interesting. It is. There is just a hint of bitterness there, but it is really soft. That's so interesting when, when I was reading the description of a Japanese pale ale and how it has bitterness, but it's a very soft bitterness. And that is 100% how I would describe this. This is a beer that has a little bit of bitterness. I can feel the sense of what would make this a pale ale, but it's a very, very soft, round, smooth, and almost calming bitterness. Like 
you know that it's there, but the note is just very, very subtle. It's not it's like in your face, it's not the first thing that's hitting you, it's just a really soft and gentle kind of bitterness. I'm very happy with all of these beers. I, I really enjoy drinking them. There are very sort of specific flavor notes to them that are rather unlike a lot of other beers that I've had. And not in the sense that it's like something completely weird, like here's beer made with dragon fruit or something, but beer where you take a style that you think you know in the form of you know, a lot of lagers and pilsners and pale ales and stuff from sort of you know the general Western world, um, you know, along with maybe in the case of the the, the rice pilsner, um, you know, certain East Asian kind of lager styles. So you, they take a flavor profile that you think you know before, like you've you've had a pale ale, you've had a um, you know a, a, an amber ale, all of these, but they give it their own. Japanese spin, just quality of ingredients that while none of the notes are particularly strong or in your face or over the top, all of it collectively is very well round and enjoyable and yeah, just very subtly um, well crafted. I think excellent craft in the sense of subtle flavors that you can really appreciate is I don't know, something that's you know, very much something that I think the, Jap the Japanese have historically been really good at um, in a lot of different you know, aspects of both their, you know, their food and their drink. Um, and this is very much the case for, for these beers. The other thing about this that I will say is, like with the Sunrise Ale, it's got definitely a more, um, more of a medium body to it. I mean, all of these, none of these are, are thin, um, but it definitely has more of a notable body to it with that really, really, really just like cloud-like soft bitterness on the top. Um, I think because it's got the more medium body, there's more of a feeling of kind of the grain that's involved in the making of this. Now, before I get into the rankings, I just want to say, Every single one of these beers, I really, really enjoy drinking. I thought that Kawaba does an excellent job with the beer that it brews. And one thing of note, and I've said this maybe in a couple of other episodes, is that what strikes me just so much about all of these beers is the quality of the water that's used in the brewing process. You can almost just taste how clean it is, how pure it is, the fact that it's come off the side of a mountain. I mean, yes, I believe that from tasting the quality of the water in this beer. Just the feeling of excellent ingredients, people brewing beer with simple ingredients that aren't crazy, very, very kind of simple, but, but um, refined, excellently crafted ingredients makes for excellent beer. I think in some ways that is very much like a metaphor for a lot of Japanese cuisine or sort of Japanese food and drink in general, this idea of simplicity, but excellence in simplicity. And the other thing I would add to that is not just excellence in simplicity, but this concept of taking other styles that you know other groups of people have done, they've made, you know, food and whatever, and then crafting it in a very sort of Japanese way to make it something very unique to itself. And this is also very applicable to all of these beers, where each of them are based on a style of sort of, you know, Euro-American Western beer, but if you try each of them, they feel very particular to themselves and they don't feel like something you've kind of had before, even though you can see where the influence of that Western style came from. And that, I think, just the pure uniqueness of that, um, I gotta give the brewery point. So all of these, good, but now let's get into the actual rankings. So in last place is the Snow Fison. This beer is perfectly nice. It's got a nice kind of tartness to it, excellent quality of the water, good body, all of that. Relative to the other ones though, I don't think it stands out as much. There's, there's a nice kind of tartness, but that's really the main thing I get. The tartness and the sense of just good water. What I also don't really get about this is how exactly it's a wheat beer. There's not really much of a feel of that that I get from this. In the scheme of beers, quite nice. So I actually flipped these. I think in second place really is the Sunrise Ale. Um, this is an excellent sort of Japanese craft brew variation on an amber ale. It's got that kind of little dryness, bitterness, the caramel malt, all of that, but the, but the values, the decibel levels, you know, so to speak, are all just toned down a bit and kind of unified into this very, very balanced, well, as the brewers have said, roundness. And that's all on top of the excellent quality of the water. 
which makes for a very nice spear. But as nice as this one is, I actually want to put the Pilsner above the Amber Ale because the fact is that this is, it's, yes, it is a Pilsner that is in many ways very characteristically East Asian. It's just the quality of the ingredients. The rice, the barley, the water, um, a tiny, tiny little bit of hops. It's just such a pleasantly refreshing drink that is just a wonderful variation of a Pilsner or sort of just a general pale lager that you've had before. The excellence in simplicity uh, in a Japanese style is really, I think, what just makes this beer so good. But then in first place, I really, I have to give it to the Twilight Ale. The fact of the matter is, this really does honestly stand out to me as something that is a new style of a pale ale, a Japanese pale ale. So just by virtue of the fact that the brewery, along with, I would just, you know, presumably some other Japanese craft breweries, um, are designing a new style of beer, or at least their country's variation on a new style of beer, I just, I have to give a lot of points for that in terms of creativity. But on top of that, the beer itself is really good. It is, again, it's got that roundness. It's got that smooth, balanced, sort of unified sense of different flavors working together. And most notably, it's got the characteristic bitterness of a pale ale that is just smoothed out. It's like if you took a, you know, like a rough stone with all the edges and you just gently polished it. You smoothed it and you polished it until it was just kind of this, this, sphere and you still have an essence of what that rock is from before but now instead of it being all kind of like rough and gnarly and sharp but now it's all kind of smooth and, and soft and and a little bit more just gentle overall and that sort of to use the metaphor of what this beer is for more of sort of a you know like an english or an american pale ale certainly an american pale ale and i really really like that about about this beer mm. As I said, the one thing compared to the other three is because it's a little bit more full-bodied, I think there's a little bit less of the sense of the excellent water, but given all of the other notes, that more than makes up for it. And again, along with the creativity um, and the ingenuity, um, this has got to be first place. So this is my final assessment. In terms of the food, you know, that would be a very interesting assessment to do if I tried this with different kinds of Japanese food. I would definitely say though that, you know, any sort of rice dish, uh, n n I will agree this probably does not go with sushi. If, if I were doing something very soft like sashimi, you're doing, you know, salmon, sashimi with just a you know, little bit of soy sauce or just as is, right? Just pure, excellent cuts of raw fish. Um, Definitely these two, really, really this one. Honestly, I would just do this one. This goes with sort of stronger flavors. This one can do kind of both. Um, this one, I think, I will agree, is a good middle of the road beer. You can have, you know, heavy Japanese food, lighter Japanese food, works kind of all around. Um, so yes, I agree with the company absolutely in terms of their assessment on what foods you want with each one. So rice-based dishes, you know, sushi, this kind of stuff, heavier things, you know, grilled meats, and then this, you know, can kind of go either way. So anyway, that's my assessment of Kawaba, um, or Kawaba. I would recommend, if you can, absolutely try some of these beers. They definitely are slightly on the pricier side if you go to a craft beer store, but honestly, in my opinion, they're worth it, even just for, you know, sort of a different taste experience. All right, till next time.